everyone, what is up? Evan here, back again. Today I'm going to bring you a $750 gaming PC computer build. Uh, this is right in between some of the previous price points that I've done before. I've done a $1,000 gaming PC build, and I've done a $500 gaming PC build, but I haven't done a Skylake build based upon uh, the $750 price point. Uh, this probably isn't the most common price point, but I know there are still a few people that are looking around in that range in between the $500 to $1,000 jump because that is quite the jump, uh, so to speak, but we're going to get right into it here. Uh, this was an interesting kind of build. I didn't initially, wasn't quite sure what to go for in this build. Uh, the i5-6600K I believe I used in the $1,000 gaming PC build, and I believe I used an i5 non-overclockable edition. I believe it might have been the 6400 uh, in my $500 build. So this was right in the middle. And I had to decide whether or not I wanted to invest $250 alone into my CPU. I ultimately decided to opt for that, and I'll explain that detail a little bit further down. But uh, we're going to start off with the CPU here. Basically, Intel's flagship CPU, the Intel Core i5 6600K 3.5 GHz stock quad-core processor. That means that that um, processor can be overclocked, you can raise the uh, CPU voltage, you can raise the clock speed, and you can overall get more performance out of this CPU than you would a stock Intel CPU without the K that cannot be overclocked. Most Intel CPUs are locked, only the K edition can actually be overclocked, and the X edition, but we don't need to talk about that. Uh, it's Skylake CPU, it's based off the Intel 1151 socket, so it's the newest socket available from Intel. Uh, it's a super, super great gaming CPU due, due to its uh, really high single-core performance, and you shouldn't have any problems with this CPU whatsoever. The 6600K is tried and true. Really, an i high-class i5 is one of the best processes you can get for gaming alone, in my opinion. To cool that, because that doesn't actually come with a stock CPU cooler, we've got a Cooler Master Hyper TX3 54.8 CFM sleeve bearing CPU cooler. I wouldn't say that this is the best CPU cooler to use, but it fit the budget price range and it should be more than enough to get a fairly decent to moderate overclock on the CPU. It comes out with 54.8 CFM sleeve bearing CPU cooler. It's kind of like the um, smaller cousin to the Hyper 212 Evo that Cooler Master makes, which is one of the most popular CPU coolers ever. It sells like hotcakes and it has been selling well for years. But overall, it's a great CPU cooler. It has your average heat pipes. It has a great fan. It's going to push out a lot of air towards the back of the case, which is what you want. And overall, I think it'll do just fine for overclocking. Skylake CPUs don't run, tend to run very hot anyway. It's not like you're going to be cooling an uh, AMD chip of that magnitude, so you shouldn't have any problems using that CPU cooler. This motherboard is very interesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about this motherboard. This is the ASRock Z170M Pro 4S Micro ATX LGA 1151 motherboard. Now, I normally wouldn't want to put a Micro ATX motherboard into a $750 build. I instead would want to opt for a full-sized uh, motherboard of the ATX standard. Uh, especially with the Z edition, which is, enables you to overclock. But this motherboard is really, really interesting, really, really unique. We're going to go ahead and visit the Newegg page here so I can show you some more detailed photos, some detailed uh, specifications here, right? But on this one little motherboard from, um, from ASRock, we can see we've got an 8-bit CPU power connector. We've got, the, obviously, the LJ1151 socket. We've got two PCI uh, 3.0 times 1 slots, and we've got two PCI Express 3.0 times 16 slots. Normally, a micro ATX board will only have one PCIe uh, slot, or two, one PCIe um, 3.0, one PCI 3, 3.0 times 1. Up here, we've got four memory slots, which is normally on a micro ATX board, you will only see a two memory slots for dual channel memory. Uh, we can see here we got a 24-pin ATX power connector. We've got six, I believe six, maybe four, four, six, uh, six gigabyte connection, uh, SATA connectors. And overall, if you just take a look at it here, it's a great board. We've got, uh, if we look here, we've got, uh, six USB 3.0 ports. We've got a PS2 port, uh, audio, HDMI, which you won't use anyway, uh, Ethernet. Really, I can't believe they managed to pack this many features onto such a small board. And it has good reviews. It's got 4 out of 5, and the only problems that I really saw was a BIOS issue that has since been corrected by ASRock. So, really, it's a great little motherboard for $99 for a Z overclockable rated motherboard. I really can't find any problems with it. 
Basically, for the price of a micro ATX board, you're getting all the features of an ATX board in a smaller price package. And that actually enables us further down the line to get a cheaper case, which will also save us some money in the long run. It's really a win-win situation. I'd highly recommend this board. All right, moving on from that, from memory, we've got some Avexier Core Series 16 gigabyte, two times eight gigabyte of DDR4 2400 memory. Very standard memory, just some of the cheapest uh, 16 gig, two times eight gigabyte uh, memory that I could find. Uh, it's got good reviews. It's got four out of five eggs. It looks cool. I think it actually supports LEDs. Uh, if we go down here and we look at the specifications. It's a dual channel kit of memory. It's uh, black with a heat spreader. Oh, and yes, blue LED color right there. So it's cool. It's got blue LEDs. That's not something you have every day. And it's only 70 bucks for uh, 16 gig of DDR4 memory. DDR4 memory is still going down in price, and I think that's great. Uh, even DDR3, I've seen 8 gigs of DDR3 for as low as $28 right now. RAM prices are dropping, and that is great for the PC enthusiast. Might not be the best for the RAM company producers, I will admit that, but it's great for the enthusiast that wants to get the most priced performance out of their system. Now you can actually fit 16 gigs of RAM below a thousand dollar budget. That's, that's unheard of previously, uh, considering how RAM prices were actually quite high this time last year. Moving on, we, for storage, I wasn't able to fit an SSD in here, even though I kind of wanted to. Instead, we've just got the Hitachi UltraStar 1TB, 3.5-inch, 7200 RPM internal hard drive. Nothing terribly special about this at all. It's one of the cheapest 7200 RPM 1TB drives that you can get. 1TB should still be more than enough for your games library, uh, video, and your um, photos, and all that other stuff that you might be storing on your PC. In my $1,000 build, I believe I was able to fit an SSD in there along with a 1TB drive for storage, but with this budget range, I didn't want to take the performance value out of the GPU and the CPU to be used towards gaming for the faster loading times and the better app responsiveness and that sort of thing. I figured that I'd rather wait a little longer for my PC to boot up and to launch the game itself than to actually play the game at a lower frame rate. I wouldn't want that. So that was my rationale for choosing that. Now we get to the fun part of the uh, gaming PC build. It's always fun to talk about the video card, but it's always the biggest point of contestment that will ever exist. It doesn't seem to matter what I do or what I say, I'm always wrong. But that's okay, I'm gonna choose it anyway. This is the PowerColor Radeon R9 380 4GB PCS Plus video card. It's a great, cheap video card uh, by PowerColor here. PowerColor is one of the cheaper manufacturers, uh, like Zotac and Diamond are another, some of those lower tier, quote unquote, uh, graphics card manufacturers. Other companies like MSI, Asus, and um, Gigabyte will often run you a few dollars more, about maybe ten dollars more. Oftentimes they'll have better coolers, they'll uh, just run better in general, but the reviews for this are solid, so you just got a 4.5 average, uh, average out of 4 ratings right here. And the PowerColor uh, Radeon R9 380 for the $200 price points is the best graphics card in this class, and I'll show you how I came to that conclusion. First of all, I'm going to reference here Tom's Hardware, best graphics card for the money. Uh, this is a highly reputable source. I've used this source for actually a really long time since I first built my gaming PC back in summer of 2014 or so. Basically what Tom's Hardware does, they look at all the video cards that are currently available in the market, and then they determine the different price points that uh, those video cards excel at, and then they value the, them based upon price performance, uh, uh, gaming performance, raw performance in terms of benchmarks, and that sort of thing. So if we scroll down here, we can go ahead and look at the graphics card top picks here. Lowest video card that they have here is the GT730. And if we move up the different scales here, these prices actually aren't correct, but just go by the actual listing itself. We can see the Sapphire Radeon R9 380 is right here in the middle between the GTX 970 and the R7 360. The main competitor at this price point at about $200 or so is the uh, 960, GTX 960. The reason I didn't choose the GTX 960 is because its price to performance ratio is much lower than the R9 380. In fact, if we scroll down here a little bit further, best at uh, Full HD 1080p, playable, determined to be the AMD Radeon R9 380. We can see the prices are actually more accurate here, around $200 or so. 
And it says, we quote this right here, that increase is enough to put the 380 ahead of NVIDIA's GTX 960 in just about every one of our benchmarks in 1920 by 2080 and 1440p. There you go, in writing. Tom's Hardware, put a little credible source next to it. But in case you still aren't convinced, I'm going to go in here, and this is uh, GPU Boss. I don't use GPU Boss's recommendations, I only use the external sources that they uh, reference within their... Uh, uh, statistics at the bottom and if we scroll down here we can go all the way down and compare it as you can see the GTX 960 versus the R9 380 and these are the different categories that they have compared in benchmarks as we can see the 360 is superior in 3D Mark 11 and superior in 3D Mark Vantage graphics but the R9 380 comes out on top in terms of 3D Mark 06 it has a higher overall frames per second in Bioshock Infinite at 1080p ultra preset and it has uh, overall higher frame rate in Crisis pre Crisis 3 at a very high preset. So, based upon that, I decided to go with the R9 380 for this gaming PC build. You got a problem with that? Leave a comment below. We'll have a nice discussion about it. I'm always willing to talk about technology and stuff because, hey, it's fun. So, moving on, gonna try to speed things up here. Uh, for case, I decided to go with the Zion Zon 310BK Micro ATX Mid Tower case. Great little mid-tower case, actually supports front panel USB 3.0, it includes a blue LED, I believe it's a 120mm case fan, uh, it looks great on the inside if we can show it here, it's not that cookie cutter sheet metal, not a whole lot of sharp edges as far as it looks, it supports a full size power supply, it supports a micro ATX board, which of course, as I mentioned before, we can save money here, we don't have to buy a full size mid-tower case to support a full size ATX board, we can go with the micro ATX form factor, you get a nice compact little PC and you get a really powerful little box that you can even use for an HTPC if you wanted to or you can fit it into something like a, a cubby in your desk and you don't have to worry as much about ventilation issues. So overall, great little case. It's being sold for a great amount of money. As you can see, the side panel open right up, right up there for uh, cable routing and that sort of thing. Moving on, to finish up, we have the EVGA 500 watt 80 plus bronze certified ATX power supply. Nothing terribly special about this power supply. EVGA, in my opinion, has always made a very quality product. This is 80 plus bronze. Uh, it's not modular or anything, but as I said before, it's a quali quality product. It's solid. Uh, it's got solid capacity. There's not going to be any major problems with these. People rely on these uh, kinds of power supplies all the time for gaming PC builds. And 500 watts is going to leave you with enough overhead. It leaves you with over 100 watts overhead. Yep, about 120 watts or so worth of overhead so that you can overclock your CPU and GPU if you so wish. So based on those parts, we went a little bit over this time, but the total came to $757.45. Uh, the not including mail-in rebates, of course. I'm going to leave the uh, PC Parts Picker link in the description below. If you enjoyed watching or if you watched all the way to the end, first of all, thank you very much. Leave a like, leave a comment, feel free to subscribe if you want to, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.